eBay shares getting a boost in the midst of the pandemic. The stock up nearly 40% since January. Well, earlier this year, Yahoo Finance caught up with eBay CEO Jamie Iannone, who took the helm in April. Let's listen to what he had to say. First off, I had spent eight years of the company earlier in my career. So that definitely helped knowing the business and the company and the people. Uh, but certainly a, a different environment starting during COVID. But you know, a big piece of this was really just uh, starting with a listening tour, talking to all of our employees about what's important to them and, and their thoughts, um, really getting out and visiting our customers, so our sellers and our buyers, uh, which turns out actually to be pretty easy to do uh, during COVID because uh, it's easy to schedule these calls and spend some time with them. Not the same as being inside their business, but really great to connect with our community. And then third was really to uh, get around the world and see our different offices. Uh, and was able to do that uh, pretty easily, just changing my Zoom background to Amsterdam or Korea or uh, something along those lines. So look, that's what really helped me crystallize on the strategy that we're going after, which I'm calling a tech-led reimagination of eBay, really to create the best marketplace for buyers and sellers. Defending our core business, we have a huge opportunity at Julia in non-new and season, and um, really getting back to that core and going after that growth is uh, is what we're focused on. Being the seller platform of choice, you know, one of the first things I did was get out there and talk to our sellers because it was one of my favorite things when I worked at the company before because they've got great ideas on the tools and capabilities they need to be successful. And then third is building lifelong trusted relationships with our buyers. So spending time with them and figuring out how do we take friction out? How do we make it easier? And a lot of the things that we're building and working on are really designed to, to help build those longer term relationships with buyers. Okay, there are a lot of things that I want to unpack uh, with you here, Jamie, and a, a tech-led reimagination, which is so interesting to me because a lot of conversations these days, and I'm sure you're having these as well, it's all about the word digital transformation. It has been at least for several years, and you know, before it was kind of like the analog company going there to and from, going from and to the digital world, but it's interesting because eBay, 25 years old, digitally native player, and you're talking about a tech-led reimagination. What does that look like? Yeah. It's really using next-gen technologies like AI and machine learning to really change the experience on, on eBay. Uh, so I'll give you a small example, which is, you know, we just launched a feature for local pickup. So sometimes people transact in person on eBay. Um, and how do we make it really easy? Well, we built QR codes that when you and I were uh, together and you handed me whatever it was, a musical instrument, we swapped QR codes and the money just magically flows in the background. That's a small example. A big example is the work we're doing in managed payments. So forever, for the, for the longest time, for 25 years as a company, you've had to create a separate account and manage your payments separately than managing your eBay account. And we've been working on a way to bring those together so it's really seamless for the seller because they can now manage everything in one place. Um, their fees, for the most part, will be lower. Uh, and the feedback that we've gotten from sellers that are on our managed payments platform has been, wow, this is fantastic. Same thing from the buyer side. When you think about a new buyer coming in, they only have to create one account. They can keep that on file. And there's all kinds of great things we can do once we manage the payments for buyers and sellers. So from small little things to, to larger things, it's really about how are we using technology to make it a much more uh, compelling, seamless experience on the site. All right. Um, let's also talk about the core marketplace. That seems to be the focus. I know this company, even before you got there, made some divestitures. Walk us through the strategy as it relates to the core marketplace. Why is this the area you all want to really hone in on when we are seeing this kind of explosion of e-commerce through this pandemic and a lot of other opportunities out there that uh, you, I guess you could go after or maybe you just rather focus um, here at the core marketplace? You know, in our core marketplace, we believe we have a huge untapped potential in the non-new and season area. That may be for apparel off-season or off-price goods. It could be pre-owned, uh, vintage, collectible, um, or just kind of new product that's that's out of season. And when we look at that, there's a $500 billion total addressable market. And for most of the verticals or categories that we're in, we're maybe low double digits, high single digits penetration. And the, that, that business is growing double digits. So it's a huge market that's growing fast. That's a big opportunity for us. And what you're seeing us do is go vertical by vertical and say, how do we really win in that market? The other really unique thing we have, Julia, is consumer sellers, uh, people that just come to sell uh, things that they have around the house. And it's great. You know, when we look at it, the average household has $4,000 of items that they could sell, and less than 20% of that's online. 
And what's great is when someone comes to sell, they usually become a better buyer. They become twice as valuable as a buyer because it's fun to buy and sell on the platform. And it brings that great unique inventory that consumer sellers have just lying around the house that you can't buy from a business usually. So by really being focused on our core in our marketplace business, we see lots of untapped potential. And we've started rolling out specific areas like we just rolled out um, watches and a bunch of changes. And this week we announced sneakers and I can talk about those, but specific changes by vertical to really enhance the marketplace experience. Okay, you just basically took my next question uh, from me, which was, you just said four thousand dollars in items. That's like what's average that's lying around people's households. I, I'm gonna have to tell my husband. Um, that's remarkable. So, kind of given what we've gone through, this recession that we're in, a lot of people who've lost their jobs, furloughed. You have to imagine they're probably looking for things to sell. I can, I mean, anecdotally, I can tell you, I've heard from friends who are doing this. What are you kind of seeing from the customers these days? Are you seeing more people who are looking to, to sell items? Walk us through what you're seeing uh, from your viewpoint as it relates to the broader economy. Yeah, so for our sellers, we're absolutely seeing that. So people uh, just coming on to sell because they're at home more and they have more time and, and they may need more cash. And so coming onto the platform to sell uh, different items that they have is important. Small businesses are also a really important part of eBay. And so we put a lot of programs uh, in place earlier this year, uh, the one in the US was called Up and Running, where we invested over $100 million globally to really help bring those small businesses online. They may have had an offline business and not been online uh, and wanted to do so, and um, really investing in them and helping them come on. We had tens of thousands of new sellers sign up and they're seeing success on the platform just during this time period. Um, what's selling and what are people buying? Uh, it started with things that people specifically needed for the pandemic. And then it really transitioned into um, things that they needed staying at home. So home gym equipment or office equipment, desks, that type of thing. But then it really became across the board, um, really buying in, in every category. I was at the dentist a few weeks ago and he said, look, I've been, the free time has given me time to fix up this 1988 truck. So I've been buying vintage car parts on eBay. And I started with this mud flap that I was missing that I was frustrated by. And now I bought like five or 10 different things to fix up the truck. So we've really seen it start narrow and then become really broad in terms of what's being sold and, and what people are buying on the platform. What's your kind of read, uh, whether it's, you know, the small businesses, which we know have been just decimated by the pandemic and the recession and the consumer, what would you say your read is and what they might need? You know, what we see is that um, there's obviously been a shift towards e-commerce uh, because of the pandemic. And what's been great to see is that um, as mobility changes uh, and mobility opens back up, um, it does taper off a bit, but we stay well above pre-COVID levels um, that we've seen before. And I think what we're really seeing is things across the board. So people finding a, a hobby or enthusiast because they have the time or they're at home. And so, you know, whether that's musical instruments or training cards or, or other hobbies um, that people are getting into. And of course, when people are, are cash strapped uh, and, and times are challenging, eBay is a great platform because of the values that we have. What we've seen in past um, economic times and past recessions um, has been eBay really flourishing because people turn to the platform to get the amazing deals that we have. We've got inventory from all over the world. Uh, it's spread all over the world, so we don't really have supply chain constraints. Uh, and like we talked about with consumer selling, we bring unique inventory to, to the table. So I think in these economic times, eBay is a great place for, for that and, and for the enthusiast customer just looking to, you know, how do I take advantage of, of all this time that I have at home? And you mentioned earlier uh, going through it by a category by category approach. You mentioned watches, you mentioned sneakers. Obviously, sneakers have just been hot, hot, hot lately. Uh, talk to us a bit more, though, why that was such an important market for you to go after. And I think the trust factor there, I think that's something that you're really focused on. And where do you kind of see that going next? What are the other opportunities? Yeah, so if, I, if you look at watches, which we rolled out about a month ago, um, what we did is we said, we're gonna authenticate every watch that's over $2,000. We're gonna add escrow payments for every watch over $10,000. And then we're gonna have different buying channels to help watch enthusiasts. And it was really focusing on how do we take a category and really create an amazing, awesome end-to-end -end customer experience. And while that took us months to do, weeks later, we're following up and doing the same thing in our sneakers business. So in our sneakers business, now we've started authenticating sneakers over $100. We're starting with top brands and uh, starting the beginning of next year, we'll do every sneaker over $100 um, will be authenticated. And that really helps build trust in the platform because you know there's a third party authenticating it. Um, and sneakers is a huge business for us. 
Uh, we sell millions of sneakers uh, every single year. It's a great platform for us because it brings on a younger demographic. And so we're investing a lot behind uh, these new verticals like watches and sneakers. And you're going to continue to see us do this vertical by vertical, where we enhance the experience, build trust, build new capabilities to really make sure that we're, we're driving this tech-led reimagination of the best marketplace for buyers and sellers. You mentioned sneakers obviously being popular with the younger generation, 25-year-old company now. What are kind of the ways that you're reaching the young generations and what are the opportunities as it relates to it? Yeah, well, look, we have a lot of, uh, of the younger generation. We have 182 million uh, buyers on the platform. And just last quarter, we added 8 million new buyers. That's more than the last six quarters combined. Um, but there's a lot of things we do specifically there to, um, to use our technology to appeal to them. Uh, one is we make a huge investment in our apps. Uh, most of our buying is actually done via our apps, and that appeals to a younger generation. It's a really slick interface. We just launched dark mode for iOS and Android, which was the most requested feature in our apps, and, and the younger generation absolutely loves it. And we're looking at category by category, ones like sneakers and um, trading cards and other ones where we introduce younger consumers to the platform. Um, but with the scale of what we have of 182 million buyers, we have more younger generation on the platform than, than, than most competitors. Jamie Inone, CEO of eBay, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on.